Hello everybody, this is Todd from Toad Painting, and today we'll be finishing up this guy. This is the Forgotten King from Super Dungeon Explorer. And so, I'm looking back at this guy's the non-metallic metal, and it's nice, but I want to give it a little more highlights, so I'm going to brighten it up a bit. And then the rest of it's going to be pretty much kind of boring gray. However, like his horns and his hands are going to be like the same kind of dark gray, and his his flesh is going to be like a lighter gray, almost white. But I'll make it more interesting when I do the uh, the pink glow coming off that staff. So that's the plan today. So how you guys all doing today? Excited for some somewhat chibi model? Chibi adjacent? Chibi adjacent. Well, it's part of a chibi game, so it's just the same kind of style. Just in a monster form. Is, really cool. Yes. He's a pretty fancy boy. Okay. So, let's just finish up that metallics before I work on the other bits. So, I'm gonna use some more white here. It's my brightest white I got. I'm just gonna just do some edges. Along the middle. Let's see. I almost feel like my camera should be on the other side, so my hand, this hand always gets in the way, doesn't it? Being a brighty. Yeah, maybe it's time to yeah. switch it up. Okay, let's do it next stream, I think. Uh -huh. Fiddle around in the stream. Yeah, don't, don't do a live camera swipe. <laughs> yeah. Your pellet cam is perhaps not getting all of your pellet? Yeah. I forgot to adjust that before the stream. Okay. So I'm adding pure white to this part, and I'm going to go back over it with uh, just some more white, and it'll add some more saturation to it, and make a better gradient, because I'm just kind of trying to make, start to increase the brightness of this area, so I have more contrast and make it more metallic looking. Trying to basically hit all the points where light would kind of catch and make it look more interesting. Just basically kind of corners and stuff like that. Maybe even just a little bit of the bottom part too. Just because if it's very shiny, it kind of gets reflective and it reflects all kind of surfaces. So if 
it's reflecting stuff that's reflecting off the, the floor, for example. Some backlighting. And what's the backlighting? What's the name of the backlighting called from like coming from the the floor? Floor lighting? Underlighting? Maybe that sounds better. Underlighting. Because backlighting is like you have the main source of light. Normally the sun. And so you like so main source of light sort of source of light coming from like a direction. And the backlighting would be like the, the light coming off of like reflecting off like sky from them. So it has a blue. It's a little darker and it's, and it's a little more blue coming from the other side. And then the underlighting basically be the sun reflecting off of like the ground, whatever you got, like cement, stones, whatever you got, water even, and then getting some upper light. So that's why you don't have like stark shadows in the in daytime. Ambient reflections. Which I'll try to capture when you try to paint a miniature you don't have. Because all your shadows are pure black, right? So you're just trying to emulate that kind of stuff. them also metallic. Okay, so that's basically as far as I want to go with all the white. I'm just going to go back with some more white and just blend it in a bit. And so it's not pure white in some areas. But it'll still kind of... Since I'm doing a very thin coat of more white, kind of keeps the, the brightness of the underlying white. So it kind of helps with that. It helps kind of blend together and makes it look nice without having all these saturated. If you do like if you start adding white and other very bright colors to your paints, it kinda desaturates it and looks like it makes it look chalky or pastel. But if you shade it, you take a bright color and darken it. It keeps the uh, natural saturation of the darkened colors. But keep, if you do it thin enough, you keep the brightness of the uh, of the undertones like the whites. So for example, if you wanted to like, paint like a light red, but you don't want to make a pink, a lot of people just add white to their red and it'll make a pink color. If you do a white underpaint and then you do a very thin red over top of it, it gets like light red without being like pink. I think it's good enough. I'm not going to go for anything realistic. Especially since it's a chibi model. Alright. Let's do the guy's belt before I get into it. I 
This is a Crixbane base, I think it's called. I'm gonna mix in with some Samar Black, just for the base coat. It's a little tedious being all green and green, but I'll be fine. Once I add the pink, it's gonna get a little ridiculous. Okay, so while that is drying, I'm gonna start working on this sh staff. Okay. This is pretty much all just like bandage. So I'm going to use my gram use. I don't want to use the same kind of gray, because I'm going to use like a bluish gray for his uh, owl feathery flesh, and then do a darker gray for his hands. So I'm probably going to use... just like a very neutral gray. I don't think I want a staff to be like green. I might make it more yellow, actually. How about that? This is not too close to his... Uh, his armor, right? Because it's more along the side. It's not like it's not like kind of like overlapping, so it's fine to have it a little similar. So let's. All right, I make it a little green. Make the base coat. Yeah. All right. A little change plan. Or make the base coat. Bane base. I'm gonna highlight it up to the uh, more white and then almost white. And since I'm not doing a two brush blending on this one, it's almost the same color as I did for the uh, non metallics, but you can see the difference when I do the uh, when I do layering instead of two brush blending. It'll be much more like subdued and like chalky, which is kind of what I want for like a cloth. So I don't want it that saturated. Unlike the uh, the armor, which I think golden armor kind of needs a little bit of saturation to it. Though this is not like my f usual gold color scheme, though. I go for a much more saturated look. This is like a ancient kind of like almost tarnished gold. Even though gold doesn't mean tarnished, but you know, it gets dirty. It gets moldy. Things, you know, it just gets dirty. He's like an old guy, right? So I'm sure he's got like dandruff that's flaking off onto it, and turning it green and stuff like that. Dandruff? Oh, owls probably have dandruff. He's also got horns. So he's like a goat. Probably just chewing on things. Got some slobber all over it. You know. Whatever goats do. I'm sure there's some real lore for this. But... Uh, I'm not saying this is canon. I'm not saying this guy is angry goat guy that likes to chew on things. I mean, we know he's angry. Well, okay. I actually read his lore just like five minutes before I started streaming a little bit. He basically goes promised the hand of like the princess of like Kessel. Capna, uh, Crystalania, Crystal, uh, something, the Crystal Land, Crystalia, and he got denied, and now he's just like cursed and forgotten. And he's just angry. He rules over. Promised a human to this. I'm sure he's, a, owl? he's got a good personality. I bet you until he got betrayed. You don't know him, okay? I mean. in between when you last painted them. Oh, wow. Yeah, right. mm -hmm. yeah, fine. Yes, I should have. I did yeah. not. Because <laughs> it's right up against what you're painting. Yeah, well, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna paint the, uh, the base. I'll do that till another time. Okay, let's see. Is that 
eyes in focus, right? Just my hands in the way. Feathers is kind of gray, right? Yeah, I'm gonna do like a whitey gray. And then it's gonna have a bunch of pink from the light from the staff. I've got the uh, the concept art on my screen right now, so I'm kinda of basing it off. I'm not gonna do hundred percent because I'm gonna make a few changes. Big pipes. Mm. In the music? No, it obviously doesn't have big pipes in the model. How about the music itself? It kind of does sound like big pipes, but I could be wrong. Kind of bends there, so it catches more light. Just trying to lighten up. Steal the whippets. No animals or bears. I got a little bit of more white into my mouth white. I just do some. Just on the top, most edges. Is that you? Yeah. And then just a little bit of medic care, just some of them, the way the cloth kind of folds up. Now I'm just gonna go back with my Crooksbane base and just tidy up some of these when I'm doing the highlighting. Yeah, good enough. So, I'm actually going to do the same thing for the belt. Really. The belt means it's very similar. But probably more contrast. Can make more leathery. I'm just doing higher contrast for the leathery belt just because it's got more shine to it. Even though it's going to be the same color, I'm trying to make it different. Like, exact same. I'm kind of being lazy here. I also don't want to make too many colors. I don't have this guy to be like a rainbow, right? So I'm going to use the same colors, just in a different way. To make it look different, but not too different. If you catch my meaning. Okay. 
And then we'll do a little scratches just to make it like it's an old guy, the old belt. Probably doesn't probably lucky belt or something, right? Or an unlucky belt. <laughs> I don't even evil people don't like you can't get that edgy bosses. Like my unlucky belt. Nobody understands me. Etc. etc. Because you know, bad guys are always a hero when they're a mine. This guy's just out for vengeance. He wants his bride back. Somebody stole it. Too much highlighting on this side because this big old beard is hiding that part. But yeah, not too s close to the uh, staff, but it's the exact same colors. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's a little too bright there. All right, close enough. His magic girdle is now finished. Uh, let's do the hands. I'm also going to use Chris Main Base for this one, but I'm going to highlight it with another color. I'm going to use uh, Quick Spain Base, or Quick Spain Highlight, on top of Quick Spain Base. I almost feel like I should have toothbrush blending for this part. Oh well. I'm gonna keep his hand very dark, I guess. I'm probably gonna go back with some black ink. Depending how I feel. But it's like his face is gonna be like a very different color. Just because you know how bird feet are and bird faces are quite different. One's feathers, one's scales. Basically same premise. But like I said, I'm not trying to make him look too like rainbowy, too much color variation, so I'm just gonna stick with the, the five colors I have already. Also another reason why I'm doing it so limited palettes because when I do the pink, it's gonna be it's gonna be quite something. Yeah. Uh, let's, let's do this. He's got some metal bits on his, his scabbard on his dagger, but I'm not going to worry about that today, probably. Unless I really run out of things to do. Because, like, the, uh, I don't know, the end part of his uh, candle and the hilt will be the same kind of gold as that. If I get around to it today. I really want to get finished the staff. That's the more, most important. Ugh. That is the thing I want to do today. Is those points. So let's work on the gray wood he has on his staff. Um, that's just that's just the gray that I had. Here, nope. I had it out. Now it's gone. Really? Sorry, I misplaced it. Mm. Trader Green now. Where did it go? Here it is. I might actually do a bit of brown ink for this. Just to give it a bit more variation on the staff. 
F is, or sorry, brown is also quite a neutral color, so it's not a huge deal. Let's just double check his, uh, I guess I'll make his staff quite dark. Okay. Ooh, I'm actually gonna add some of that uh, sanguine base, so it's a reddish dark color. Same kind of color I used for the uh, the back part of his, uh, or all the shadowy parts on his uh, gold. All right. The hands are kind of dry, so let's let's play around with the colors. I think I'm gonna do a mix of uh, Spain highlight and moral white. Okay. It's actually a little too bright. Let's see. Yeah, it's too bright. Alright. Let's just darken it with some crux bang base. And then do kind of like a sort of dry brush. Because the hand is quite textury. Kind of like a scaly leathery cloth thing. Okay. It's a little wet there actually. Let's go back to that part. Palm is still wet. Okay. I make even his claws the same color, just to. He'll be fine. A little bit of texture. This is some interesting music. It's fine. It's fine. <laughs> I mean, it's not as bad as some of the other ones you've done. No, it's true. I've had some terrible music pop up on this channel. Okay. So. A bit of edge lighting, right? Taking out the details.
I'm gonna actually go back, go to our smaller brushes. Uh, number four, yeah. Do a number two brush. Try to make his little claw hands all weathery and cracky and stuff. Lots of deep recesses. Because you can't have nice evil claw hands. He doesn't moisturize, no. He's too old and bitter and angry to moisturize. Who's setting his ways, you may even say. Okay. Now let's. I might just do a little bit of brown wash over those hands. Now, the staff. Staff is going to be darker, I guess, and brown. So, I don't want to do this. Work on the little dagger one, thinking about this part. Awesome, too. Mm. Lighter or darker? I think darker would be good. Yeah. I know I said darker already, but I'm just thinking how oh, was the hands. The hands are kind of dark. It'll be fine. Spain base with some sanguine base. Use a shade on the staff. Give it a bit of a red tinge. A little too thick right now to zoom up. Little garbage trucks here to pick up from trash. Someone's standing back for this one? Uh, I don't know. I don't think so. <laughs> yes, no one's got our death wish today, which is good. I'm just trying to even out the uh, paint and just kind of like a reverse dry brush with my fingers, just tap it away. Yes. And then a little bit of finger painting. Especially for very textured areas. I don't quite like it. Okay. 
let's let's do a bit of a go back over to the hands again and just lighten it a little bit because I want to do the wash and get darker. So I just want to make sure it's it's not too dark. Oh, thanks, uh, much coon. Morj Kuhn, sorry. I'm terrible pronouncing. If I butchered that, I'm sorry. But thank you for the follow. Okay. I think I am going to do Caspian Flesh. It's got a bit of a. It's a brown, but it's a bit of a yellow hue to it, so. kind of help it mesh with the rest of it. Because I don't want it to be too warm, right? The warm part is going to be that uh, glow from the staff. So I'm just going to slather it on, kind of. Given the recesses where I kind of overpainted a bit when I was doing the, the highlighting. Shuffle the texture a bit more. And kind of change the tone of the hands. not really correct on the camera, but the hand looks a quite different from the staff now. I don't know if you can tell it or not on the camera. Right. So the last thing to do before I do the face and the glow is the staff. Umber, umber, it's a darker brown. Oh, very warm, this last shade. Okay, before I do anything, let's make sure the staff is dry. There we go. Staff is definitely dry. same kind of red I was using for the metal, so still kind of fits with the whole model, so not too out of place. Which is kind of important. Especially for like very natural, like this is because it's all like kind of organic feeling stuff, so the wood staff, and flowing cloak and stuff like that, so it's all like natural stuff for the most part. Yeah. I'm not gonna worry about highlighting it. Because I probably would, but since I'm meeting the glow, I'll to use the glow with the highlights for the most part. Alright. I know it's pretty pretty face. Before I do that, I'm just going to do the horns. Space coat them. I was actually do them the same color as the hands, and I forgot to do the same. I was doing the hands, so. I guess I'll say do while the base coat's drying. And that the glow from the staff is going to make this very vibrant pink. Murder's Magenta I'm going to use with some Moral White. It'd be kind of ridiculous. But I don't know how much I'm going to overdo the glow. So, he is kind of cartoony, so I might just push it a lot. But 
I'll play it by ear, really. I don't have a set plan for the, uh, how much glow I want to do. Okay. Now the face is going to be grayish blue, more white, or sorry, it's going to be gray coat gray and more white. I'm gonna start with the mid tones first. And this way I can highlight and add texture. Because these are basically all feathers, right? So it kind of give like a fur texture a bit. Lots of small, soft, downy feathers. Give it a bit of a fur, kind of fluffy. Because the birds in the face have like the very the finest part of the because the feathers in the face are like very fine, aren't they? Like the smallest, the most delicate parts are feathers. Oops. Not too sure, but I think it is. Because they're definitely not the big ones. It's like the crests, but those are like around the back of the head. Places to touch this guy without rubbing off paint. Have a, just a little bit of a water break. So lights gonna be coming from this side mostly, so it's gonna be a little shadowed. It'll play well into the uh, the glow effect because the glow is not gonna really overshadow the sun, right? It'd be really hard to do. Is his beak darker? I don't think his. I guess his beak is a bit more gray. It's like a darker. Actually, he's just kind of splotty. He's like mostly with some splots. That's kind of cool. I'll try and do that. Some darker, maybe more creamy, browner spots. I should need more blue. Might just do that. Darker blue spots. Give him some speckling. I like how I did the Cthulhu, my hood should be Cthulhu. Yeah, I really need to change the camera. Big old fat hands in the way most of the time. Let's see. I get some blue tack and put it on his hand. So I don't rub off that paint. Just make sure that wash is dry. Because his, uh, his little beard mustache thing kind of fades to a darker color, so I'm going to play around with that too. Same tone as the, uh, the beak, I think. That's my plan. Busy area. Make sure it's got a solid coat before I do anything else. It'll be hard to go back and fix anything if I leave a, a primer in that area. I'm gonna move the camera a little more. Okay. <laughs> 
Yeah, that was a fire drop to them. Okay. okay. Is that a little better now? See the model more, less hand. <laughs> He's getting there. All right. Well, that's dry. Let's go back and. Dude, a second coat in the hand on the beat the horn, it's not the hand. Now the horns, I'm probably gonna keep them the way they are. I'm not gonna do any washes like I did with the hands. Because they're not touching anything that's very similar. It's not adjacent to like the staff, which is the same kind of color as the hands. Okay. Just adjust this. There we go. I'm going to do a new palette now. It's time for the pink, among other things. So it's going to be Murnus Magenta. Actually, no. I'm going to base coat it first with more white, and I'm going to just do two brush blending. I just want to keep that brightness and saturation up. So, base coat, make sure it's like pure white. And then I'm going to start doing the two brush blending and shade it. This will keep the, the brightness up. And then it'll make a glow effect. more coats away. That's for sure. Okay. So, let's do some sh highlighting on that face of his. his old bird face. I'll use my number two brush for this one. Because he's got the small, delicate feathers, so. At least around like the eyes and stuff like that, and they get bigger as they go out away from the face, like the mouth and the uh, eyes. I think that's actually an ear. I said some low, low bearing ears, if I say. I like elf ears too. So here I'm just basically doing the texture. I'm just following the natural flow of his face the way the, uh, they should. stuff's in the way. There we go.
now that its eyes are kind of visible, it's very creepy looking. All like sunken and birds don't have like very like oval eyes, like very circular. He doesn't. Very angry bird. He doesn't have the giant eye. Oh, are there any giant eyebrows? I don't know. Hard to tell. Hey! How's it going, Dracos? Dragoon? Hey, thanks for the follow. Bug King. Wow, thank you, Hounds Two Pennies, for your raid as well. Oh, thank you. Wow, that's quite the uh, the party. <laughs> How are you guys doing today? I'm just doing this uh, Forgotten King from Super Gen Explorer. Is that? I'm gonna be working on some pink glow effects to come off the staff once I'm done the face. Should be fun. What were you working on your stream today? So, what were you doing in your stream today, Hounds Tooth? How do, sorry, how do minis? What? <laughs> Little child soldiers. That sounds. Uh, that sounds different. Are they like the? Uh, oh, from Raging Heroes. Child soldiers from Raging Heroes. I thought they were talking maybe like the um, the forty k cherub things with the wings. Lulus. Interesting. How they... Feel free to post the link. Yeah. <laughs> I'm kind of intrigued. It's kind of... I'm going... Yeah. You post a link to be yeah, good. Yeah, those are literally child soldiers. Oh, that's cool. Jailbird stray kids. <laughs> Little orphan annies. Do they have, like, guns or switchblades? Or guns. Okay. Sounds kind of creepy. Am I painting off camera again? Stupid. You're wandering a little. Yeah. Just a big guy. Alright, um, I think the texture back of the head now. And I'll start shading it better. Oh. Thanks, Halt Mini Paint. Thanks for the follow. Okay. Let me just change the camera a bit. How's that? Yeah, that's Okay. Too far out. Just try this. Okay. Oh, see your link. See how ridiculous this is? Oh, okay, so it's like Mad Max. So what was it, Mad Max 2 they had? Like the uh, the whole band of children? They're like on their own and doing terrible things, whatever. Was it Thunderdome? It kind of reminds me of like very much Mad Max. And even got the old nuclear sign on, on the girl's head, the leader. Or is it a guy? I don't know, it's hard to tell. One of the teddy bear and the mohawk. <laughs> that's kind of cute. Kind of creepy. I feel like that's the line Raging Hero straddles constantly. <laughs> <laughs> kind of like the butterfly on the scope is kind of nice little touch. Or that fat puppers that the little girl's holding. I got a lot of character, those guys. I like it. Yeah, I haven't watched that movie in forever. I don't think I've actually watched the full movie. I've only watched parts of it. But it wasn't like very campy compared to the rest of them. I don't remember the other ones being very campy.
All right, let's do some more shading or highlighting, I guess. coat gray. Yeah, I'm definitely going. I don't know who else is going this year. I haven't really been in the scene much for playing, but I'm definitely going down and entering. I won't be playing though, unfortunately. Do some shading now. So it's this gray coat gray. Yeah, I'll be working on my luck and load entries the uh, rest of the week. I'll be doing rock and roll on Thursday and Friday probably. Like fun. Were you in the iron? Oh no, sorry, iron arena. Sorry, I was confused. Iron painter, iron arena. Oh, okay, the uh, the colossal. Oh, some pretty good work. I liked it. Life gets in the way. I can understand that. We do have cool prizes again, though. Yes, I think we have more this year than last year. We're definitely gonna head start at least. I'm still not done. <laughs> well, no, you're not done till the day of. Pretty much. Or if you do, compared to last year, it was after too because we got some prizes late. <laughs> I have to speak up, Gat. Get it. You're not. Get oh, a yell. Really far away from the today, apparently. Yeah. Just secretly yelling over here. I was just talking about how last year we really liked drenching with sagebrush. Yeah, it was very nice. And then I was hopefully be bringing us another entry this year. Okay. So, I just reclaim some areas which are a little too dark. A bit of texture to it. So, are you still like the green brushes? They're okay. They're not too bad. Let's see. I mean, it's different from my other ones. Oh, thanks for the follow, minis. Eeny minis. <laughs> That's a good name. Yeah. All right, so I am going to do a little bit of speckling on his face. And I want to do a darker but slightly different tone. So maybe I want more blue or do I want more green? Let's do more green. So I'm gonna do a quick Spain base and mix it in with the uh, gray coat gray. So then, let's look at the art. Oh, <laughs> no problem, Eminis. 
Alright. Look at this art again. So he's got... Okay. So he's got, like, darker weird colors here. I'm off... I'm off slobs. Oh, thanks for the... Thanks for the follow, Firetop77. I can pronounce that properly, just not other ones. So this is actually a different color. And then... He's got, like... A bit here, and he's got some speckles. Let's see what I can do. There we go. I didn't even realize he had a beak until you started painting it. I know. I, th I thought it was like a nose or something. Mm -hmm. okay. yeah, I thought it was just part of the general like feather fluff, but it is not. Yeah, kind of gets hidden. Nope, it's not very circular. This is like a chibi style monster. This is from the uh, Super Dungeon Explorer game called uh, Forgotten King. This is the king. The Forgotten King. It's one of the reasons why I bought that board game. Because he's an awesome looking miniature. Just, I've had him for years, just haven't got time to paint him until now. Okay. If you can find a retail copy of the box, it's really great value for the models that come in it. Yeah, there's a lot of awesome looking miniatures. Um, okay. I'm just going to do a little bit of transition of his color into his beard. So that's how the art is. I'm just going to give him a bit of green on the ends. Okay, now I'm actually also going to... Oh! Thanks for the follow. How's it going, Listine? You're a big fan of Chibi as well? Or are you just checking out? Just hanging out, enjoying the uh, somewhat terrible music. Come on, this is fine. <laughs> no. Okay. I'm gonna add some more streaks to this part. Just a little more. It's really borderline if you can call this particular guy a chibi. Well, he's definitely very stylized, and he kind of fits with the rest of the chibi models. He's like cartoony, but well, that long body though. The long body, yeah. He doesn't have this huge, like, massive head, but it's so, like what most of the monsters. The head's kind of in proportion, but it's still very stylized. Okay, how's that face? I just want to. I don't know if I want to highlight that. Is it dark green or not? Nah. I'll just do the, the glow. No, because you put so much pink on there. Yeah. All right, let's do the horns, and then after the horns, then glow. So this is Mammoth White. Oh, thanks. Uh, was that the? Was that the, um, the the feature that I got on Hero Forge minis, or is that my uh, my Facebook page, Toad's painting, Toad painting? I can't even say my own name of my place, my company. <laughs> yeah, apparently Tuesday is too much for me. Too much Tuesday. I mean, we can update it to toad painting, but I just don't think it's quite the same. No, toad spinning is not as good as toad painting. So 
this is that weird song. I swear, every stream. <laughs> this pops up. These are. are these like goat horns or like what other kind of horns are there? Antelope horns? It's like why would you have a goat slash owl? It's a weird combination. I mean it looks cool, but what kind of personality does he have? That's why he got the uh, the princess didn't want him, I guess. Chewed in too many things. Ruined too many dresses from chewing on it. Take a long time to chew those up in the beak. Yes, he does. He's also the main boss of the game, so... I mean... You definitely need to have a bad attitude to be... To have, like, five random people try and kill you. Just saying, like... And they've killed, like, all your cool forest friends you spent all that time accumulating. Yeah, like... I'm just saying. Perhaps he is not truly the bad guy. Oh. <laughs> yes. When you like, the heroes are on killing squirrels and stuff like that. And they just have bloodlust on their mind. And some poor little leafy things. And the frog knights, oh my god, the frog knights are amazing. It's like, um, armored frogs riding. Sorry. Armored frogs riding like um, almost like the Final Fantasy like what's the movie in those weird birds? Choco. I don't know what the names are. What? Those things, yes. Those giant riding birds. You played those games before, haven't you? You know the names of those birds. No, I played um, Crystal Chronicles. Oh, okay. Same universe, probably. Yep. They're going on killing, smashing like up the, uh, the basically the houses of the, the monsters, the spawning points. So, definitely not the good guys. Okay. Um. This guy's also much cooler than them. Yeah, well, he's like three times the size. Go back with the just do the shading. I'm actually gonna use a little bit of black, I think, and just give it some more texture on the underside. Make those horns extra dark. Okay. Uh, actually, no. Let's instead of doing black, I'm gonna do red. Listen, black. And just a tiny bit of Crixbane base. Make sure I'm on camera and.
Well, this guy, I don't know if you've heard the story about this guy, his backstory. He was promised the hand of a princess from Christonia? Christalia? Christalia. And then he denied him his rightful bride, I guess. So he got all angry. And they banished him to the ruins, the ruined kingdom. Okay. Um. Alright, let's do one last coat of white on that staff, and then we'll do some pink. A lot of pink. This is just more white. And then I'm going to use Murs Magenta to pinkify him. like without his uh, blue tack on his hand. <laughs> yes, they did. Yes, they did. So. I'm just thinking how I'm going to do the glow. And it adds a bunch of white to the parts. Alright, so I'm just gonna basically do some like white highlighting on the areas where I want the glow to go. And then I'm gonna basically use like a wash using that. Using the pink. And then so it's going to come off of here, and it's going to go down this way, so it's going to hit here. And then so it's going to hit this part too. And then a lot of this side right here. And then I'm just gonna do a little bit of texture just to show off like or we got like some old ratty kind of like garb, so I'm just gonna do that. So how is it? Like, if you guys can see that, it looks like a little bit like cross hatching kind of thing. Okay, let's do some pink. This is very thin for this part. Wow, it looks like white, doesn't it, on the camera? Huh. I have to change the settings, I think, to show it off properly. Let's see. Oops. Makes everything too warm, but whatever, at least the pink's showing up now. Okay. So 
So while that's drying, I'm gonna go and work on some other parts of him. And get the right amount of pinkness. Just you know. I'll go back over it once it's dried a bit and do a darker pink on the more shaded areas like in, inside of his uh like the insides of that area. But yeah. Okay, a general glow effect. Make sure it's nice and smooth, otherwise it gets chunky, it looks bad. Maybe a little bit on this, just a little bit on that side. Just a hint of pink glow. And same on this horn, just a little bit of pink on that side. No, I haven't been playing any games recently. Just been uh, working my painting and being quite busy. I'm gonna be going back into War Machine though when I when the Infernals come out. So we'll be playing, probably buying a bunch of Infernal minis and lock and load and playing them there. How about you? Playing a painting? Both? Okay, let's see. I still have my Crick's Arm. I haven't played in forever. Do you, have you even played any Crick's in Mark III? I played, like, I think a couple games of Crick's in Mark III, but I'm pretty much playing predominantly uh, Convergence. I did quite well with them. But now I think I want to do Infernals. They look cool. They're more my style of minis, really. Cool. Yeah, there's some really cool minis. Blackstone. Yeah, Blackstone's got some a lot of character in this stuff. I think I have a, I gotta do some black stone minis too soon. 
next couple months. I've got a commission for that. Should be fun. I like the rogue psychers. They're kind of fun. Is that what the ambles in? Yeah. Yeah, that's what's in that box then. Okay, let's do... Go back to a little bit of white, touch up the staff, and then I'm going to do some, some pure uh, reverse magenta. Out of the box. I was like, mm, I think we'll have to stream this one. Yeah, it's a pretty cool looking mini. Oh! Well, thanks for coming around. Thanks for the follow, I think. Right. Give that a second to dry, and then I will do some. Shading on that. Actually, I need a better coat. It's almost pure white for this part. And very belatedly, thank you for the follow. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Thanks. Sorry. I'm terrible at remembering that kind of stuff. Sorry about that. Okay. Let's do some. All right, once that dries, I'm going to do some pure Merce Magenta. <laughs> yeah, that's the problem. It's uh, one of those games that's like constantly like updating the rules because there's changing so much. And the meta's changing and they're, they're constantly updating and improving and nerfing and buffing troops and stuff. So, it's hard to try and do it casually. Alright. Yeah, I think your days as like a hyper competitive player are probably behind you for one machine. Yeah. Possibly. Had a good run there. Yeah, that was okay. But was it really the hyper competitive? Winning and placing at big events. Well, I guess. <laughs> well, thank you anyway, Dragoon. Hopefully you have a good stream. I'm almost done my stream, I've got a half an hour left, maybe. Maybe we'll see each other. Okay. You can definitely see the pink now on the staff, which is good. But I need a, some more shading. Deeper, darker areas for like the recesses. Kind of helps give us more depth. And the, the shadows actually have some pink as well.
Let's do some more pinkier glows now for the hand and stuff. Definitely have some glow. Actually, also the staff. Let's do the staff in the hand. And then maybe make so I don't rub off any of the back parts. I'm going to sticky tack it so I can touch it freely. And let's do the other parts now. Let's do a little, a little bit of blue tack. Just lightly, just so it doesn't I'll rub off the paint with my fingers. Just make sure you have a good primer when you're doing this, because you want the sticky deck pulling out the paint off the, uh, the mini. I use Style and Res. It's a very good primer. Okay. So, let's do Staff. So once I've done all this little highlighting with the pink, I'm gonna go back over with a bit of like a very thin Mars magenta and just do some of the shadows. I'll just darken it a bit. And keep it all. Just basically make the area get a little more pinker. Like I was doing with the, uh, the shadows and the guys. Uh... Oh, thanks for the follow. Dead zone. So just like around the um, oh the, the long feathers here, what are they called? The cheek meat? Cheek feathers? Ah oh, yes, the cheek meat. Yes. I'm sure it'd be pretty tasty. You guys eat certain no. parts of <laughs> my vegetarian girlfriend disagrees. Anyway. I should stop talking about eating poor defenseless animal on stream. Just a little bit on this part right here. Yeah. A little too thin, I'm starting to pool in the recesses. I'm also gonna give it a bit of a streaky texture, kind of like, because it's cloth, right? So I'm gonna give it a bit of a thread texture. So then, once it dries a bit, I'm just gonna go and just do a little cross hatching like that. Just to show like the light's kind of catching on the thread. Oh, hey! How's it going? How's it going, guys? Captain Mad Love, thanks for the raid. How's it going? How's it going, Dylan Bower? 
<laughs> you guys sound happy? What are you guys doing today? Ray Tray. <laughs> oh, thanks for the, the thanks for the follow, is skulls. Are you guys painting corn stuff? Skulls for the skull god? Or skulls for the skull throne? <laughs> One of those two. Anyway. All of the above. Both. Well, repainting that corn guy who's wearing all nothing but skulls. The corn, the, uh, the skull cloak. It's a ridiculous model. Is that even out yet? Oh, I'm sure it does. They're pretty good at like releasing like two weeks before they pre after they preview it. Let's work on some glowing effects here. No skulls today. Yeah, he's. Oh, I don't think Super Dungeon Explorer has any skulls really in their models. So for like a few of like the orcs, maybe I think, or, the, or maybe it's the goblins I'm thinking of. Hmm. Yeah, but definitely not very skull -heavy. Yeah, this is definitely not 40k, where it's skulls and everything. Okay, I'm just trying to make his staff look a little more glowy. Oh, thanks for the follow, Dylan Bower. Hopefully I'm pronouncing that right. I'm pretty terrible at pronouncing, so... If I'm not pronouncing it properly, I'm sorry. Captain Mad Luck was working on Star Wars Legion. Oh, okay. That's cool. I do like Star Wars. Thank you. How nice are those minis? Hey, what kind of plastic are those minis anyway, the Star Wars? Are they like a similar plastic to like um, Super, Dun Super Dun Explorer? I think they're like this kind of like very durable kind of plastic that these guys are. Thanks for the follow. Hopefully we can follow you back. Sorry, did. <laughs> Thank you so much. Oh, okay. So like they're very flexible. And they need to be primed, obviously, right? Or do they one of those models where you don't need to prime them? I think bones don't need to be primed. And you guys are more than welcome to share links of what you're working on. Yeah. Love to see your works, so links to the models you're working on. Mm, then I bet it is probably quite similar to Super Dungeon, which is a hard but lightly flexible plastic. Yeah, do I have any other... Oh, thanks for the follow. Yeah, because this is, as you can kind of see here, it's flexible, but not too flexible. Oh, thanks, Dylan Bohr. Thanks for the host. So. Oh, harder than that. Huh. Oh, interesting. So, like, almost like a hard plastic from... Uh, like GW kind of plastic? Because... I would have thought that kind of plastic would be more like flexible and and more like durable because like the... Okay. Because... Is it the same plastic as the uh, X-Wing for example? Because... Well, they're like big ships, so maybe not the same plastic. Thanks for checking us out. Oh. Thanks for the follow, Skulls. Thanks for watching. Okay. 
No, I haven't seen... I haven't played... I've only played a demo game of X-Wing. But I've seen the models around. They have decent quality. Like, the detail level is quite decent. Okay. How are the mold lines in those things, though? Oh, sorry, I missed that. Oh, there it is. Thanks, Lady B minis, miniatures. Thank you for the follow. Thank you for watching. Okay. Let's try and get some some of the color in the more recessed areas. Almost forgot this part right here. Thanks for the host. Thank you so much. <laughs> Get your. <laughs> I'm still not a big fan of the, uh, the staff. I need a. I don't know. It doesn't look glowy enough to me. I don't know how much longer I want to work on this staff. Oh! Thanks for the host! <laughs> host is with the mostest. Or something, I don't know. You guys having a little, uh, quarrel? It's just friendly paint visiting. Yes. And some friendly ba ba bantering? Bantering. Or whatever it's pronounced. Okay. Uh, let's see. I'm just darken this color area. Good night. Oh. <laughs> Have a good one. I do paint, I'm just not nearly as talented as Todd. <laughs> You're quite a good painter, Kat. You don't really have a setup right now, unfortunately. Okay. Yeah, maybe one day we'll stream together on some weekends or something. Yes. <laughs> yes. Kat's my moderator, so. Jill's my cat partner. <laughs> and cat painter. It's all P3 paint, so he is not slowly poisoning himself. Yeah, I try not to kill myself. At least publicly.
I think I might use a little bit of mixing medium. I think it's more purple on this guy. And the staff at the very least just needs a bit more pink. That's, that's, that's pretty terrible. The, I'm actually, um, I think you guys can see this right here. A little, it looks like a divide sign right there. I got myself with a modeling knife, so it's like very, very like small, but it's like very deep. I pretty much got myself to the bone, and it's like right between a tendon and a, an artery, so I was very lucky there. I was just building some kingdom death, and I nearly offed myself. That was a hospital trip, unfortunately. Yeah, I've, I've, I look at my brushes too, all the time. Like right now. Let's do a little more white before I do some. I'm actually looking at like in the pastel pastel look on the staff more than more vibrant and darker. That's more glowy, I think. Let's see. What do you guys think? More like a glowing staff. I just use cheap brushes. These are like a couple bucks each kind of brushes. And I use and abuse them and don't really care. I don't buy fancy ones. Okay, let's do some mixed medium on this pink. I mean, paint enough and you're gonna kill any brush. There's yeah. no such thing as a brush that's gonna last forever when you're painting full time. <laughs> yeah. Have a good night. Oh. Have a good one, Bower. Nope, Captain Mapper. Oh, sorry. <laughs> sorry. He said night, so I assumed he was going. Sorry. Thanks for the raid, uh, Captain Madlove. And have a good one. Okay, let's try this. I think that's a little better now. More pink. Pink for the pink gods. I'm kind of overdoing it just on purpose because it's kind of a cartoony model anyway. Sorry, what was that? What minis are you painting? They are looking... Are you saying this, uh, this model looks as good as my other ones? I, are you talking about the, um, the Infinity board game miniatures? Sorry, Ellie. 
and my brain's a little fried right now, so maybe not be understanding words properly. I'm almost done my stream, so. Oh, this this right here, this is the um, Super Dungeon Explorer miniature. It's the Forgotten King, based off the board game called the Forgotten King. It's a it's just Malibu cool. Malibu does make lots of fun stuff, though. Yeah, they have lots of awesome-looking minis. Just be prepared for the assembly. <laughs> assembly? Assembly Malifo. Oh. The first time you assemble Malifo, just expect it to be about three or four times the number of parts you expect it to be. Yeah, and like random terrible spots, like the feet are not part of the model, like they're a separate piece. Or like in here. <laughs> yeah, like, I love the style of Malifo, but they definitely need a better way of producing or putting them together. Slightly less aggressive parting. Yeah, <laughs> you can say that again. But I love the game, and I'm excited for Mark Three, so. Can't wait to get back into the action again. I have never found anything from Games Workshop to even rival some of the Malibu miniatures. <laughs> <laughs> even like their um, bases. Todd did the studio painting on the Victorian and the sewer bases. And that stuff doesn't come with like instructions or a photo of what it's supposed to be at the end. <laughs> you're staring at like 17 pieces that are supposed to assemble into one base and you're like oh okay <laughs> yeah it's definitely needs some experienced uh, modelers okay I need to some of their stuff is really nicely parted though yeah I, I don't know why some There's of them are just, just a few pieces in the range and a few bad insane. apples Oh, sorry. I was just aggressively uh, pinking him. I need to lighten up that guy's gold part right there. That's coming along good. Let me just work on his eyes. So what color his eyes are before I finish up the stream. Should get those things done. Oh, they're, they're yellow. Easy enough color. Oh, no, okay. I'm going to do white. And then I'm going to use the ink for his eyes. Give him some orangey eyes. Should be interesting. My favorite blazing orange. So let's make sure his eyes are very white. Awesome, cool. Thanks for watching. Have a great night. Have a good one. <laughs> okay. Let's make sure those eyes are super white. I'm going to do a little bit of a pupil. And have fun, Helms, too. Oh, yeah. Good luck. Don't roll too many ones. Oh, thanks for the follow. Uh, I... <laughs> I'm not going to even attempt that. <laughs> Okay, so make sure those eyes are nice, pearly white. And, uh, just get up. Whoops, no. Man overboard. Alright. Let's get a good, very fine tip brush. I'm gonna add a little bit of pupils, and then I'm gonna do the wash. It's blazing orange is what the wash I'm gonna use, and it's. I love it for like doing like glow effects and stuff. Okay. Normally, I like to have my miniatures like looking side to side or left to right, but this guy makes more sense looking straight ahead. I'm getting slit eyes because why not? Looks more sinister when you have like non straight, like non uh, circular eyes. Okay, let's make sure that people can look smaller.
Okay. Have a nice night, Dylan. Oh, have a good one. So, blazing orange. I'm really impressed with how this works out. This color. It like it makes almost any color like feel like it's brighter than it actually is. Okay, so a little bit of orange. And then just a tiny bit. I guess it's hard to tell because of how my color contrast is, but. Makes those eyes very yellow. I'm just gonna do a little more ye orange on the bottom just so it's got a bit of a gradient. We do definitely recommend the purchase of this box set if you can find it at retail. It's packed with really cool models. Yeah. It's probably one of my favorite board game for model wise. All the models are just it's fantastic. Also, just like the dollar value per model in that box. Yeah. Really good. It is absolutely stuffed with minis. Okay. I'm not quite finished yet, but I'm almost done streaming. I... I'm not going to finish him 100% on stream. But I just to remove some of this. Sticky deck and show them his proper glory. And then we'll have to decide who we're going to go raid. Yeah, we have many options to raid now. Whose choices, choices, choices? Okay. So that's the. Um, let me just. I want to give his eyes a bit more character, so let's give him. Let's put a brown wash around the edges of it. So it goes from like a, a yellow to an orange to a brown. Especially in this eye right here. Yeah, that beak. What color should make that beak? Should I keep it white, or should I make it black? Um, a black beak would be interesting. Yeah, I think it needs to be something different than this hair. I'm gonna make it darker. I'm gonna give it a, like a really bright sheen coming off of it, reflecting the uh, glow. Just because it's like a same, same kind of like texture as the, the horns, right? So it's very shiny. It's made of like fingernails. Maybe not fingernails, but you know, the same kind of keratin. Keratin, yes. Fix a little texture on this.
think it even has a bit of nostrils too, so I'm just gonna add those in. And then mix the medium with my pink and just smother it in pink. I might go back a little bit of black and give it more contrast so it's deeper and darker than the rest of himself, but wait for the pink to dry. But yeah, I think he's good. He's a fancy boy. Alright, I think we're gonna go raid somebody now. You got yeah. somebody? Okay, we wanna go see Miss Hap Damage. She's working on a gladiator for us. Or who are doing the football and Lux and Fortress today. Oh, Choices, choices. Um, I don't know. Should I flip a coin? All right. Yes. <laughs> All right. We're gonna go raid uh, Miss Half Damage since I terribly mispronounced her name. I called her M Shaft Damage when I first met her, which is probably not a good thing. All right. Thank you so much for watching, and uh, hope you guys enjoyed the show. And I'm posting this guy on my social media soon. Some of my next couple hours. Thank you so much for watching. And we'll be back Thursday at 4. <laughs> Have a good night. Wow, we have 45 viewers? No, it only should take 20 of mine. That's cool. Oh, okay. We have no ice cream, do we? Mm.